Hi, I'm Kristen Hayashi, Director of Collections Management and Access and a curator at the Japanese American National Museum. And I'm here in Janum's Collection Storage. I've brought out a few artifacts from the collection of varying sizes and material types to show you how we handle and store um, artifacts in our collection. And this is in hopes that maybe some of the tips um, will give you some ideas on how you might preserve your family treasures at home. At the Japanese American National Museum, like other collecting institutions, we strive to uphold best practices in terms of how we store our collections. And that includes controlling a variety of variables, including temperature, humidity, and light levels. And in addition to that, we also try to store our collections in archival materials, including acid-free boxes and folders. Handling and storage of the artifacts might seem fairly basic, they're incredibly important to preservation. So I'll just start by putting on some gloves. These are nitrile gloves. Um, it's sort of optional when you're working with three-dimensional artifacts, but I tend to like to wear them. And my plan is to pick up this um, artifact and put it um, on a cart. So I always wanna know where I'm gonna put something before I pick it up. The next thing I want to do is I want to sort of examine the artifact. So this is a kine or a, a mallet used to pound rice into mochi. The Koseki family created this kine in the early 1900s, so it's over 100 years old. So I want to sort of examine the artifact to note any weaknesses or vulnerabilities. So I might think about picking it up from the handle because that's the way that the artifact was meant to be used. Um, but I notice actually that the handle is loose. So if I picked it up by the handle, that could be um, detrimental. I also see that there's a crack running along the entire edge of the mallet and that this piece of wire is holding the mallet together. So I think what I need to do is completely support the mallet and pick it up from there. So I'm going to, with both hands, pick up the mallet. I'm gonna slide one arm underneath to give it support and then I'm gonna pick up the handle. I'm going to put the mallet side down first and then the handle. This next item might look familiar to you. You might have one of these uh, in your family as well. This trunk, the Wada family used to carry their personal belongings uh, once they were forcibly removed and sent to one of America's concentration camps during World War II. So it's really similar to the Kine. If I was going to move um, this trunk, I'd want to examine it first and find the best place to pick it up from. And similar to the kine, it may not be the way that the um, object was intended to be used or um, picked up from. So for example, you might think about using uh, the strap here at the top of the trunk, but you'll notice that over time the leather has become really brittle and actually a piece of it has already broken off. So if I actually moved the leather, um, the strap would just come undone there. There's a strap on the other side here. This has been severed as well, just because the leather over time um, has gotten really weak and brittle. So with this trunk, if I wanted to move this, it's best to pick it up from underneath. And since um, it's rather large, it wouldn't be safe for one person to pick it up. Um, so we would need two people and um, we would each pick up two of the corners and move it this way. So both of these items are fairly large. They probably constitute some of our oversized objects. And so here in our collection storage, we put oversized objects on the shelves. We don't box them. Um, we just have them um, on these rolling shelves. And this space is climate controlled. So we regulate the temperature and the humidity and also the light levels. Ideally, if you're st storing objects like this at home, you want them to be in a climate controlled space, like inside your home, but that may not be realistic. So if you do store items like a trunk in your garage, 
just be mindful of fluctuation of temperature and humidity because those two things I think are the most detrimental um, to the artifacts. They cause the materials to expand and contract and over time that can cause stress. So just be mindful of those things. You might want to cover it uh, maybe with like some ethafoam um, that we have here. Next we have bird pins. Uh, we have quite a few bird pins in our collection. These in particular are from Gila, Amachi, and Poston. Um, these are small but the principles of handling still apply where you want to pick up you know objects um, where they're uh, at the, the safest, safest point um, rather than by a small detail like this and just make sure it's always supported. So we're storing these bird pins in um, a case that we purchased from an archival supplier and it has this clear top that allows us to, to see inside without um, having to handle them or uh, open the box too frequently. Um, and inside we've created these little trays out of archival paper and you'll notice that they re resemble like an origami box and we've placed a little sheet of ethafoam just to give it some padding. But these origami boxes are nice because um, they prevent the, the pins from really moving around and bumping into one another. We have a smaller size here. Same thing, we've put a little sheet of ethafoam inside as a little cushion. So these you can buy from an archival supply store. And again, it's made out of archival um, board. So now I'll talk a little bit about textiles. Here at Janum, we store textiles in a couple different ways. We hang some of our um, garments on padded hangers and we've created this one ourselves. It's just a plastic um, hanger that we've added some cotton batting to and then wrapped it with muslin and very cleverly tied it so that there's no glue or adhesive on the hanger. But I prefer storing textiles in garment boxes. This box we purchased from an archival supply store, it's made out of coroplast, which is archival, um, but you can also buy garment boxes that are made of archival blueboard. Ideally, the garment would fit in the box without having to be folded, but in this case, we have a kimono. Um, so the first layer here is a piece of unbuffered tissue. Unbuffered tissue is good for silk and wool and leather. Inside we have a kimono. Um, this is from the Kawakami collection, which is a large collection here that contains um, work clothing that Japanese immigrant women um, made themselves in Hawaii. Um, they brought their finest kimonos and thinking that their lives would be very different and realized that they would have to make work clothing. So they sort of cobbled together work clothes using their kimonos and also denim material um, to make work clothing that would protect them from the elements, from the sun, from scratchy um, plants that they were working with. So um, this kimono has been folded in the proper way um, and because of its length had to be folded over and so to prevent creases from forming in the silk fabric we have these pillows to sort of support the, the fabric and this is cotton batting um, that is covered in muslin and we've even wrapped it in some unbuffered tissue and then folded the material over the pillow. Unbuffered tissue has also been interleaved um, inside of the kimono to prevent the layers of silk from um, touching each other. Janum's mission is to promote understanding and appreciation of America's ethnic and cultural diversity by sharing the Japanese American experience. Growing, maintaining, and sharing our permanent collection is one of the ways in which we advance our mission. The challenge of preserving artifacts from handling and cleaning to storing and housing such diverse materials has been the focus of collection staff since the museum began over 30 years ago. With well over 150,000 objects in the permanent collection, Janum staff has a tremendous responsibility to steward these artifacts. Although the varied materials that comprise the artifacts in the collection are precious partly because they are ephemeral. Upholding best practices is imperative to ensure that these objects are cared for and preserved in perpetuity.